That's sad. I was just listening to uh, my sister has like her own business and I pretend to be like this enthusiastic customer to help her. Oh. Right, because I have a different last name than her and people don't know her sister. So she wanted the, these, she's a marketer and so she wanted her people that hire her to like do this entrepreneur book club thing. So now I'm in this book club, so, so I'm like listening to audio books to, they're audio books, so you're supposed to do your chores and listen to the book and then you go in and you discuss the book. But what it was just talking about negative self-talk, saying I'm only good at this or that's my only, yeah, so that's what it was just saying, not to say stuff like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One of my many skills. That's right. That's still pretty self-deprecating. <laughs> okay, so we did, I think we did the first three questions on that sheet, the, yeah, so then we're going to do these. So this says the following matrices are almost in reduced form. Finish reducing and then write the solution. So I just rewrote the first one. So how would we finish reducing? What step was this at? Right, so there was a one and there's zeros already here. So the first column's done and then we move here and this would be a one and then above and below need to be zeros. So above, that's row one. That's a positive two, so the one needs to be a negative two. Actually, that one's kind of fun to solve. Let's see. I was like, wow, I really need a new hobby. Well, they're not hard, they're, but if you, did you make a mistake and have to no, fix fun, this? No, fun, I said fun, not hard. Like, actually, that's what I said, they're not hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, when you I'll make a mistake, yeah, that's, did you make a mistake? Or? Like one of each, and so like once I oh, was, like, yeah. like this one is like once you reach the third one, you know that that one has to be. So then you're just looking for no solution. Right. Was the third one no solution? Yeah. yeah. The first two I got solutions, so I was like, okay, well now I just have to figure out how to prove that there's no solution. Okay, so those are our two steps. Everyone agree? So we'll just do those off to the side. Minus two, row two. Plus row one. And minus three, row two. Nice. I've been doing this a lot of years. <laughs> oh, you can't have a line of zeros. You can have a line of zeros. Because zero equals zero is okay. Oh, yeah. if it's all zeros and then a number. Right. Okay. So what would be the next step? You can't make a one, you're done. The two, this sometimes bothers people, they don't like that two there. But if there's no lead one under it, you don't worry about it. It's part of the infinitely many solutions. So we're done, so let's write the solution. Um, so that doesn't mean that there's no solution, it just means that Right, you can't make a one here. So X and Y are the lead variables because they have a lead one. And Z would be the free variable because it doesn't. So we're going to call Z T. So in our first row, what do we have? X equals one. And in the second row, we have Y plus T. 
2z equals 1. So remember, your solution always has to say x equals y equals z equals. So z is t, x is 1, and y is, rearrange that, 1 minus 2, instead of z we put t. And that would be your solution. And we're not going to bother checking it because it didn't really give the equations. Although you could write the equations from this and check if you wanted to. Is there a write in your solution where t equals any number? You can, but it do, you don't have to. Okay, so the second one. What would be the first number? So there's a 1 and a 0. This one needs to be a 0. And that's in row 3. That's a positive 1, so the 1 would need to be a negative 1. So negative row 1. plus row 3. 1, 0, 3, 5. Okay. Yeah, so this needs to be a 1, and it is, and that these two zeros, so this would be the one we need to change. And that's in row 3. That's a 1, so the 1 above it would need to be a negative 1. Negative row 2 plus row 3. This one needed more steps. But I can see now that it will have one solution, x equals y equals z equals, because we're going to make a lead one in that bottom row now. Right here. And to make a one, we divide by whatever is there. So divide by 2, and then what? The zeros above it. So in row 1, we've got a 3, so this would need to be a negative 3. And in row 2, that's a negative 1, so this would need to be a positive 1. It already is, so just row 3 plus row 2. I didn't write that step because it was just adding, so I just added them. Okay. Yeah. So I just didn't write the step, but it was easy to do. 
you could write it off to the side. And then you just write your solution. This is just one solution. Y equals one half and Z equals one half. Well, we're not going to check them. I would if you were given the equations. Oh, right. We weren't. Yeah, You'd I have to write yeah. the first matrix. This was a lot of steps. If this were a test and it were me, I would probably go to the first one and write what the equations were and check it. If it's already partly done, would it still work? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can take the equations out at any point and whatever you put in will work. Yeah. I wouldn't do that because if you had made the mistake before the point where you choose. Right. But if right. you use the original one they gave you, it should be right because yeah. they Exactly. They didn't yeah. So you could check it that way. Just write the equations for whatever your first matrix was. Okay. So what should we do here? A one in the top corner, which is divided by two. There's no row under it that we could switch with, so we'll just do that. Uh, divide by 2 do you see that the next step we're going to make a 1 right here I would probably just divide both of those rows by 2 because they work nice anyway I would do that at the same time Normally you can't do that, but the first row had all zeros anyway, so not that you can't do that. You can always divide any row you want. If it makes the number smaller, you can do it at any point. If you notice they're all in hundreds, just divide them all by 100 to make the number smaller. You can do that at any point, not just to make a 1. You can always divide a row by a number or multiply a row. Say they all were fractions like over 2, you could just multiply that whole row by 2 and then they're not fractions anymore and then carry on. So that that's okay to do. All right, so we have a, at this point what should we do next? I actually notice that it's no solution. You may not, but if you do notice it's no solution, just make the zero underneath right here. This is uh, one, so that needs to be a negative one. Because if you do that step, it will then show that um, six. So then you'd end up with this, and then you can stop. Um, can you stop before that and just say like? This you can. Okay. Yeah. You could notice it here and say no solution. I usually go the one step further, like in my solutions, and and show that zero zero zero. But I wouldn't bother making the zero above because. The, the one below is where it's going to show. You could. If you didn't notice, you would probably do both of those steps at the same time. You'd have a new row one, and that's fine. But at this point, when you see a number over here and these are all zeros, you should always stop because then you're just doing steps for nothing. Okay, so let's set up these word problems. We're not going to solve them. We'll just set them up. So... Um, it has a little bit uh, of something different in one of them, I think. So this says set up the systems, indicate what the variables represent. So I usually make these questions worth like four, one for setting what the variables represent and then one for each equation if there's three equations. So I don't really, if you remember how we set them up, we made a table. I don't really mark the table except to give you part marks if your equations are wrong. Um, but I look for the equations themselves. So the table really is not the answer. The table is how you can you, you use the table to make the uh, equations. 
Okay, so the, tri tri the King Trucking Company has an order for three products for delivery. Product one takes blah, 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 blah. What you're looking for is the question. So where does it say how many or how much? At the end. So it says how many units of each type can be carried. So Do they give you like, extra information sometimes that you don't have to use? Um, usually not, but it could. There could so be. Like, yeah. On the homework, it says 10 cups. And, like, I didn't use that anywhere. So I think it might have just been the serving size or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then so you like wouldn't need that. Topic. No, you probably wouldn't need that. It's just like saying milliliters or something. It might be not a necessary. Okay, so how many units of each type? So what are they talking about can be carried? So what are the types that can be carried? Right, that must be what they're carrying in the trucks, right? Product one, product two, product three. So X equals the number of units of product one. Number of units, product two, is there three? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, and then we go back and put the numbers in. So it says product one takes up 10 cubic feet. Weighs 10 pounds and is worth 100 per unit. Product two takes eight, weighs 20 and is $8. And product three takes 20, weighs 40, and is worth 200. If the carrier can carry 6,000 cubic feet, 11,000 pounds, and is insured for 36900. How many units of each type can be? But we're not actually going to answer the question. We're just setting up the equations. So then you would write your equations from there. So 10x plus 8y plus 20z equals 6,000. And it's, the table is sort of like a matrix if you were solving it already in the right form if you didn't have those lines. But to set up, that's all we would be looking for. And like I said, on a test, I only ask you to do that because if you set it up wrong, there's no sense in trying to solve it and it not working and you're getting, you know, spending too long trying to solve something that's maybe not the right equations. So I get you to set it up and this would be the setup. You'd stop here. Okay. So often on a test someone will say, but it says how many units of each type, so I, they want to answer the question being asked, but you don't need to, right? So just set up only. But this is what I look for, the num the, what the units represent, and then the three equations, so that would be worth four. Okay, number two says, A bank lent 1.2 million for development of three new products. I'm going to jump to the question. It's probably talking about the products. How much was lent at each rate? Well, it is. It's it says three new products. One with a loan at 6%, 7%, and 8%. So it's like. 
how much. So it's the um, how much was lent at each rate. So this is like an amount of money. So it's like the dollars lent at 6%. It's like the amount at 7%, 8%. Does that make sense? So if we were answering the question, we would say this much lent at this percent, this much at. It's like, how would you answer the question that makes sense? And that's what your X, Y, and Z are. Okay, so if we make a table, these are amounts of money. Aren't they kind of giving you like a difference? It's like, aren't they saying like Z is equal to this plus this? Yeah, so that's a little different. When you, when you have a comparison of two of the variables, you actually don't put that in the table. You do that separate. So we'll put as much as we can in the table, and then if they compare things like this and this is equal to that, or this loan is three times the amount of that, you just do that separate. So this says the bank lent 1.2 million. So that's the total, and don't write it as 1.2 if the rest of the numbers are in dollars. Like write it out. So there's 1.2 million. That's the total. The amount lent at 8% was equal to the sum of the amounts lent at the other two. So uh, we can't really put that in the table. But it's saying the sum, the amount at 8% was equal to what? The 6% plus the 7%? The sum of the other two. So this is Z is equal to X plus Y. Does that make sense? The amount lent at 8% was the same as the amount lent at those two. So that you don't really put in the table. Then what? Um, and the bank's annual income from the loans was 88. That's a total. All right, but what else? How do we make these into equations? It might actually be easier without the table, but I'll show you what I would put in the table. These would just be one because it's this plus this plus six, it's x, y, z. That equation is x plus y plus z equals 1.2 million. It's the total amount of the loans. So, and x, y, and z are the amount of the loans, so if we're adding them, that would be 1.2. Now, what's the 88? Well, the bank's income is the interest that you pay. They, that's their money they make is the interest that you pay. And the interest on the first loan is 6%. So this would be 0 0.06 times X. This one would be 0 0.07 times Y. And this would be 0 0.08 times Z would give us the income that the bank earns. So a bank's income is the interest on the loans. So that's a bit trickier. That would be a, for sure a trickier question. Those are your three equations. If we were going to solve it, how would you put this in a matrix? I would definitely multiply this by 100 so that it would be 6, 7, 8 and, and that I would like that better too. So I would do that. Uh, how do you put this one in? Rearrange it so it's x, y, z equals a number. Right? So if I were putting this in, this first equation is x plus y minus z equals 0. The second equation you could put in is x plus y plus z equals. And then the third one, yeah, I would multiply the whole thing by 100. So then you'd have 6x plus 7y plus 8z equals 8800000. 
and you can do that. So when you would put this, this is what I'm looking for. This is the end right here. But Right, if you were solving it, that, that would probably be the best way to put it in. And definitely I'd put the, the you could put the decimals in if you wanted, but then you're multiplying by negative 0 0.06 and instead of just negative 6. And, and definitely, it wouldn't matter which one of these went on top, they both have a 1. But if only one of the three equations had a 1, I'd put that one on top when I'm solving it. Okay, so that would be a little trickier for sure. Number three. A glass of skim milk supplies iron protein carbs. Okay, jump to the question. So it says, it actually lists it out right for you because it says how many glasses of skim milk, how many quarter pound servings of meat, and how many two slice servings of whole grain bread will this supply? So those are sort of the numbers, Heather, that are probably like that 10 cups or something. This is like two slice servings. That two you don't need anywhere. Okay. You know what I mean? And this says quarter pound servings of meat. That quarter you wouldn't need anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of the units. It's like saying dollars. Or Well, it might be that you, it is each you're asking, is that 10 cups is total, so it might be x plus y plus z equals 10? Do they all have to add up to 10 cups? Um, that might be the total. Yeah, it says how many cups of each cube should be used, so yeah. I yeah, so you would do x plus y plus z equals 10. Okay. Yeah, that would be another equation. Is that right, everyone else? Does that sound okay, x plus y plus z equals 10? Just I don't see the question there, but I'm guessing now that you're saying, reading well, that I out. I got two equations, but I didn't get it. Uh, that's, so yeah, that's, that's your third one. one. Yeah. Okay. It's that's sort of like this one, like the loans add up to yeah, yeah, 1.2 million. Yeah, like the setting up part. I, don't, I can't, you know, it's hard to pick up the information. <laughs> okay, so here, how many glasses of milk? So the number of glasses. <laughs> of milk. Quarter pound servings of meat, so the number of number of two slice servings of bread. Okay. Okay. So if we go back to the beginning, it says skim milk, which is X, is 0 0.1 milligrams of iron. I'm just going to write iron over here for next time. Uh, protein, 8.5, and carbs, uh, 1. A quarter pound lean meat is 3.4 iron. Right, but it's what you have to look at is this is milligrams oh, for right. iron, okay. right? As long as it's okay across, then you're okay. 
and carbs is also grams. So they should just be the right units. In real life, obviously, you might have to convert, but in these questions, they usually don't add that layer to it. Twenty. Uh, I'm sure there's not twenty grams of carbs in a meat. Doesn't even make sense. Uh, two slices of bread is 2.2 iron, 10 of protein, and 12 of carbs. So the totals, it says they must have 12.1 milligrams of iron, 97 of protein, and 70 of carbs. And then you just set the equations up from there. No. Okay. There usually is. But no, there doesn't have to be. Okay. 